What if I told you there was actually a dark side to buying into the 7-Eleven franchise? With over 71,000 locations across 17 different countries, 7-Eleven is known as the premier destination for go-to meals, quick snacks, and of course, Slurpees. So you would think a highly successful global company with household name recognition would be a great franchise investment opportunity, but that may not be the case. Now, to be fair, before we get into that, let's first take a look at some of the things that have made this franchise so attractive to new investors. So one of the biggest advantages of owning a 7-Eleven franchise is that 7-Eleven can build new stores for franchisees. So they also have the ability to convert locations like gas stations, convenience stores, even liquor stores into new 7-Elevens. And so this gives the franchisor a lot more freedom on where they can set up their shop for a franchise. And then of course you get to benefit from the brand name of 7-Eleven. Now 7-Eleven also provides enticing incentives for new franchise owners. For example, 7-Eleven is one of the handful of companies, if not the only big name company to offer financial assistance. So they provide the option of an internal financing program that can offer up to 65% assistance on the initial franchise fee. And of course you need to have at least $50,000 liquid and $150,000 of minimum net worth. Now the program will even offer additional assistance for those who qualify. But is that really the best option in the long run for franchise owners or is it possible that this is an additional way that 7-Eleven actually traps people into their franchise agreements. Let's take a look at the darker sides of owning a 7-Eleven. As you would expect, every franchise comes with its own challenges. For 7-Eleven, there are many difficulties that franchise owners can expect to face, and here are a few reasons to avoid buying into a 7-Eleven franchise. Here's the first one that's an obvious one. 7-Eleven franchises are everywhere, think about it. I mean, I've lived in many areas where there's one 7-Eleven on one side of the street, and there's another 7-Eleven on the other side of the street. 7-Eleven's play here is volume. I mean, they really wanna be on every corner making sure they capture all of the traffic that's out there. And that's not necessarily beneficial for franchisees, because think about it. If someone's traveling on this side of the street, and your 7-Eleven is there, well, even people traveling here, they might make a left-hand turn or U-turn, but what 7-Eleven does is they position themselves to be both places. Most of the time, you're probably not gonna own both of those units, and so that's gonna impact your sales. Another reason is low earnings. 7-Eleven franchises have some of the highest royalty fees starting at 48% of your gross profit, and that goes up to 59% as your store makes more and more money. Now to put that in perspective, most franchises have royalty fees around five to 7%. Not to mention, you're usually rewarded with high performance via reduced royalty rates. But with 7-Eleven, the more you make, the more you pay back. Now what usually happens is a store owner is barely able to break even and sometimes even lose money at the end of the year. Long hours and hiring. So 7-Eleven stores have to be open 24 seven. This means franchise owners need employees that are able to work late night shifts and early mornings, which in trying to hire people can be tough. Look, this can also be a dangerous job, working at a 7-Eleven in the middle of the night. There's more potential for robbery and people being disruptive. Now, 7-Eleven does provide franchise owners with a tool called Hire Right to help with their staffing needs, and it's a great tool to use. However, 95% of franchise owners say they still had to work more shifts in their location since they could not find employees to work. Next up is Ironclad Contracts. The National Coalition of Associations of 7-Eleven Franchisees has even asked the Federal Trade Commission to make changes to their franchise model. Eric Karp, a lawyer for that association, said that 7-Eleven franchise contracts included instances of misleading disclosures, undisclosed risks, built-in conflicts of interest, and opportunistic behavior. The 7-Eleven franchise contract can be a little bit sneaky. It includes things like a $50,000 renewal fee, which if you can't pay back, they will shut down or take over your store, and a requirement that stores remain open even on days like Christmas. Next is micromanagement. 7-Eleven really cracks down on management and doesn't leave a lot of room for franchise owners to really be able to manage their stores. 
In fact, you can expect more of an employer-employee relationship over a franchisor-franchisee relationship. Not only do they control your store hours, the products you sell, and your inventory, but even the temperature of your store. It's hard to get out. In a recent interview, 7-Eleven franchise owners were asked if they would sell their stores. 71% said they would absolutely sell their stores and try to salvage their investments, if that were even possible. 80% said that the equity in their stores were valued less now than they were even a few years ago. So, while 7-Eleven offers many enticing incentives that look good on paper, it can be pretty dark once you start digging in. They're easily one of the worst franchise options out there, yet they are still ranked number nine on the 2022 Franchise 500 Top 10 list. Let me know in the comments below why you think they earned this spot on the Top 10 list and make sure to like and subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.